Kareem Abdul-Jabbar's streak of 787 consecutive double-figure games was snapped in the LA Lakers' 85-83 to loss at Milwaukee, where the captain played six seasons. Kareem went 3 of 10 from the field and 1 of 2 from the line for a total of just 7 points. Now that streak would remain unassailable, it seemed, until Michael Jordan eventually usurped the record, until his streak at 866 ended on December 26th of 2001. And that mark was eventually bested by LeBron James in March of 2018. Hmm. I always like to say that Michael got to play with me for a year at North Carolina. (laughs) I think it really helped him. Spectacular player from the beginning. You can see right away Jordan was going to be a big-time scorer. And showed what an impact he was going to have on the league. This is NB88 celebrating the 30-year anniversary of Michael Jordan's Chicago Bulls and the 1988 NBA season. Now here are your hosts, Adam Ryan and Aaron Steen. Welcome back to another episode of NB88. We're up to episode five in our series. G'day to you, Aaron. How are you today, mate? Very well, Adam. Nice to be back, mate. If you're new to the show, welcome. If you're a regular listener, welcome back. We'll quickly start with a a new podcast review that we received, which is fantastic. Uh, Great friend of the show, Curtis Martin, a.k.a. KCM81 on Apple Podcasts. A.k.a. Kmart. Kmart has added another great review. It's titled A Plus Interview, fair start, and got a five-star rating. So thanks, Curtis. It reads, once again, Adam provides a solid, in-depth interview. I truly enjoyed your interview with the X-Man and the constant high level of bleeps that he provided. Laugh out loud. And then he says, great job. P.S. Bring back the bloody 87, 88 season review. <laughs> Laugh out loud. Nice. So thank you to Kmart for adding that on Apple Podcasts. Every review and rating is much appreciated. NBA. News, notes, and quotes. December 5th through 18th, 1987. On a technicality, the day the article appeared in the newspaper... Uh, This tidbit just sneaks into the episode. The previous day, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar's streak of 787 consecutive double-figure games was snapped in the LA Lakers' 85-83 loss at Milwaukee, where the captain played six seasons. Kareem went three of ten from the field and one of two from the line for a total of just seven points. Now, that streak would remain unassailable, it seemed, until Michael Jordan eventually usurped the record, until his streak at 866 ended on December 26th of 2001. And that mark was eventually bested by LeBron James in March of 2018. Mm. On December 5th, Chicago at San Antonio in front of 15,786 saw the Spurs have a 110-101 to win. Chicago dropped to 12-5 and on the young season. For the Bulls, Jordan had 40 points and 8 assists. Charles Oakley, 17 points and 12 boards. Horace Grant and Dave Corzine had 11 points apiece. For San Antonio, Johnny Dawkins... 20 points and 7 assists. Frank Bukowski, 19 points and 12 boards. Walter Berry, 17 points. And Alvin Robinson had 8 steals. Good effort there from uh, Sergeant Swat. Was that his name on uh, Awesome Endings? Yes. Sergeant Swat, I'm pretty sure. Hmm. On George Gervin night in San Antonio, the guy that the Bulls didn't select in the 1986 NBA draft put the Bulls to the sword. Johnny Dawkins left Jerry Krause squirming in his seat after an emotional pregame ceremony, which lifted the Iceman's number 44 to the rafters of Hemisphere Arena. Now, Adam, did you know that the Houston Rockets also used Hemisphere as their home arena in the 72-73 NBA season? Absolutely not. No idea, mate. You'd know this one. Game 6 versus the Phoenix Suns in 1993. Quite a memorable game. Was the last game that the Spurs played at the arena. Would that be Barkley's 20-footer for the win? Yeah. Had no idea about the Rockets using that as their arena in 72-73. Do you know the reason behind that? That's just what Wikipedia told me. Hmm. There you go. Great tidbit. Anyway, Dawkins said post-game that the teams that overlooked him in the draft were in the back of his mind when he played them. Jordan added that he knew Dawkins would be a good player that will make a name for himself. Jordan had urged the Bulls to take Dawkins in the draft in which they selected Brad Sellers. Now, MJ's words were prophetic as Dawkins would go on to average 11 points and five assists and appear in zero All-Star games. I don't think they were pathetic. Oh, sorry, I got you now. Oh, per, per. That's a bad joke. I'll edit that out. 
pathetic pro- Ah, I see. The Bulls shot just 19 for 30 from the line with Horace Jr. Grant going just one for six. And the Bulls turned the ball over 22 times, leading to 24 San Antonio points. Despite the loss, Doug Collins was happy to finish the eight-game road trip at 5-3. and three. Also on this day, it was reported that Oklahoma defeated Loyola 123-73, led by future Bulls Stacey King's 28, with Bulls rookie Horace Grant's brother Harvey, who scored 23 points and had 23 rebounds. How about that? Wow. Another great tidbit, mate. You're on fire out of the gate. And... Just to add to the brilliance, the Chicago Tribune had Harvey listed in the article as Harry. <laughs> Harry Grant. Harry Grant. No relation to Cary Grant. Um, yeah, or Gary Grant for that matter. We'll try not to refer to him as Harry going forwards. No. Now, this tidbit, speaking of, appeared in the December 6 edition of And Another Thing. We'll reference the following week's release in more depth later in this episode. Quote, in his first 11 games, Washington's Manute Bowl blocked 45 shots while attempting just 43. <laughs> in 10 games, teammate Charles Jones had drawn 30 fouls while attempting just 29 shots. End quote. Outstanding. Pretty good stuff there. Yeah. In the NBA notes on December 7, Charles Barkley said that Bull Charles Oakley's mum didn't feed him properly as a kid <laughs> because when he goes for rebounds, it's like it's raw meat. <laughs> He added, in a recent game, he had used all of his strength in trying to outposition Oakley, who, and I quote, pushed me aside like I was made of paper or something. <laughs> He's the strongest guy I've ever played against, end quote. Wow. And that's saying a lot given Barkley's girth. You'd have to say a very strong built man himself too, but uh, Oakley was just a man mountain straight out of college. After two weeks on the road, MJ was glad to jump back into his own bed and Paxson was happy to see his wife and young son, wrote Bob Sakamoto. Jordan led the 5-3 and three road trip with 31.7 rebounds, 5 assists and 3 steals per game. Charles Oakley averaged 15.1 points and 13.6 rebounds, and John Macbeth Paxson just under 13 points and 5 assists on the trip. Rookie Horace Grant played a bigger role after Scott Pippen injured his thumb, but shot under 40% from the line on the road trip. And a streak shooter, friend of the show, Sadale three started the trip 0 for 15 from the field. Yikes. Wow. On to December 8, the Tribune reported a big upcoming game for the Bulls rookies with Pippen set to return from his thumb injury and Horace Grant set to make his first start versus Philadelphia. The next three games versus Philly, Milwaukee and their nationally televised game against Houston are all standing room only at Chicago Stadium. This article also spoke of the Barkley-Oakley matchup and that Oak's $375,000 salary was far behind that of other premier power forwards in the league, such as Charles Wade Barkley and Charles Linwood Williams. <laughs> it's amusing to me that Barkley's middle name was Wade, spelt differently, of course, uh, given the constant references to his apparent uh, size and uh, stature over the years. Charles Wade. Well, Charles Wide Barkley could work, but Wade would as well, yeah. That game in question, Philadelphia at Chicago on the 8th of December. The 76ers won that game quite easily, 109-96, to and the Bulls dropped to 12-6 and on the season. For Chicago, Jordan had 33 points, 10 assists, 3 steals and 3 blocks. Oakley had 17 points and 10 boards. Horace Grant, 16 points and 8 rebounds, and Johnny Paxson had 12 points. For Philadelphia, Charles Barkley, 32 points and 7 boards. Cliff Robinson, 19 points. Maurice Cheeks had 19 and 8 assists. And Gerald Henderson had 16 points and 2 steals. And stole the ball. Twice. The Bulls' homecoming party was spoiled by Charles Barkley's 32, and the loss knocked the Bulls to second in the Central Division behind Detroit. The Bulls shot just 14 of 26 from the free throw line and turned the ball over eight times in the fourth quarter. Barkley hit as many baskets in the second term six as the entire Bulls team. <laughs> the difference was Chuck went six for 12 and the Bulls went six for 23 as Philly put on a 20 to two run in the quarter to take a 56 to 47 halftime lead. The Bulls countered with a 14-3 run in the third, but a late third-term run put the Sixers back in control for the remainder of the game. In his first start, Horace Grant hit his first three shots and finished with 16 points and eight rebounds, 
Horace said he was very nervous before the three consecutive makes helped him settle in. The poor play of centres Gilmore and Corzine continues, just two points and seven rebounds combined. Mm, not flattering. And in other news, the Chicago Express of the International Basketball Association made Michael Jordan's brother Larry its third-round selection. The IBA is a league for short people, though the article didn't state the height limit for its players, and a quick Google search also didn't shed any light. I'm glad to see that mention of the Chicago Express, mate, because I went and did some further research, and I can shed some further light on the league. (laughs) Now, what if I told you, mate? That players had to be six foot four or under. That restriction would be increased to six foot seven in later seasons. And what if I also told you that the league's director of operations was initially one Bob Cousy? Wow. What if I stop saying, what if I, (laughs) and tell you that the number one pick in the IBA's draft was a 39-year-old future Hall of Famer? Do you have any idea on who that could have been? No idea. He retired from the NBA in 1983 and was at the time the all-time leading scorer in... Houston Rockets history. Calvin Murphy. Five foot nine inch Calvin Murphy. Wow. He was the number one pick of this IBA draft at age 39. Outstanding. Other names of note that were drafted, football and baseballs of Bo Jackson, if you don't mind. What? And boxer Thomas the Hitman Hearns. <laughs> That's crazy. The season tipped off in May of 1988, not before being renamed the World Basketball League. Uh. And great friend of the show, Mike Tebow coached the Calgary 88s in the inaugural season and would be named Coach of the Year. The league folded in 1992. Wow. How's that for a bit of uh, Tidbit Central there, mate? Yeah, hashtag Tidbit Central. On December 10, Milwaukee at Chicago in front of 17,820 saw the Bulls have a 111-105 to win. They improved to 13-6. and For Chicago, Jordan had 32 points, 7 boards and 4 assists. Brad Sellers, 17 points and 4 blocks. Dave Corzine, 16 points and 6 boards. And Charles Oakley, 10 points, 13 rebounds and 8 assists. So a great all-round effort there from Oak. For the Bucks, Terry Cummings, great friend of the show, 27 points and 9 rebounds. Jack Sigma, 20 points and 11 rebounds. And Paul Pressey had 15 points. John Paxson knifed into the heart of the Bucks' defense and... Poor shot selection, an errant pass, or a wrong decision, and the Bulls' three-game losing streak becomes four, wrote Bob Sakamoto. Instead, Pax pulled up at the foul line and drilled the biggest basket of the game with 29 seconds left to give Chicago a 107-103 lead. The win was the Bulls' 500th at the Chicago Stadium and the team's 12th consecutive sellout. Jordan hit four free throws in the final 16 seconds to seal the game, the Bulls returned to a running game and were the beneficiaries of good games from Corzine and Gilmore, who combined for 24 points on 9 of 13 shooting. And I love how we now refer to Dave and Artis as the one player for the Bulls on a statistical level. <laughs> Continuing on for December the 11th, the Golden State Warriors' Chris Mullen was suspended ahead of his team's game versus the visiting Atlanta Hawks. This, after missing practice for the second time this season, He entered an alcohol rehabilitation program in California and would be out indefinitely. He'd returned to NBA action on January the 29th of 1988. Most importantly, however, Mully got his life back on track and just over 12 months after he returned with the Warriors, he enjoyed a string of five straight All-Star Game appearances. Also a member of the 1992 Dream Team and really was at his peak. He was probably a top 10 player. In the league. He was fantastic. Very dangerous scorer. Absolutely sensational player. Michael Jordan will be appearing at Superior Sports, Friday, August 17 and Saturday, August 18. Former North Carolina All-American Michael Jordan will be in Asheville Friday and Saturday. Jordan, a three-year standout for the Tar Heels and leader of the Olympic gold medal team at the Summer Games in Los Angeles, will sign autographs at Superior Sports in the Asheville Mall from 5.30pm until 8pm on Friday and from 9am until 11am on Saturday. Listen to WISE for further details. Superior Sports Company. Ashland Avenue, Asheville, North Carolina. Note, this is not an actual sponsorship. It's purely for fun. Real sponsors welcomed. On December the 12th, the aforementioned nationally televised game you talked about, it was on CBS, 
Houston at Chicago in front of 18,096 fans saw the Bulls have a 112 to 103 victory and they improved to 14 and 6 on the season. For Chicago, Jordan had a monster game 44 points, 9 assists, 5 steals, 5 blocks. Charles Oakley had a great game too 19 points, 14 boards, and 8 assists. And Johnny Paxson had 14 points and 9 assists. For Houston, Akeem had 31 points and 8 boards. Ralph Sampson, 20 points and 12 rebounds. World B. Free had 16 points and Alan Level had 15 points and 15 assists. So his stats were level, I guess you could say, in those categories. Mm. Later that same day, a blockbuster trade was executed. Houston's Ralph Sampson and Steve Harris, he had a five-season career in the NBA, were traded to the Golden State Warriors for Joe Barry Carroll, Sleepy Floyd and Cash. The folks in Sparta, Georgia and Hamburg, Arkansas were in for a real treat with two hometown heroes making their debut on national television in Rookies Pippen and Grant. Houston's Twin Towers had Michael Jordan on the brain as the Bulls' 6'6 guard disrupted the pair's shots throughout the game by coming in from behind to block each of their shots early in the game. Jordan blocked five shots to the Twin Towers' two and said post-game that he wanted to take advantage of the national audience to show everyone the new balls, including his defense and taking less shots. This after Larry Bird had recently commented that Jordan takes too many shots. That's interesting. 20 years prior to social media basically being invented, he's uh, responding to comments Bird made in the press. In Xander Hollander's complete handbook of basketball, Xander actually mentioned in his breakdown of Jordan's season that there was there was comments early on about him taking too many shots, so I'm assuming Murray's would have been included in that. Larry Joe, take that. Chicago shot the ball well in the first, running up a 37-25 to lead, but took until the last two minutes of the game to put the Rockets away. In off-court news, Jerry Krause was looking to strengthen the ball's middle with Sacramento's Joe Klein and LaSalle Thompson in his sights, it was reported that he would be willing to include Brad Sellers in a deal. Wow. Okay, so Joe Klein gets mentioned as a possible bull some 10-odd years before he actually joined the team. Exactly 10 years. Yeah. Now, this appeared on the 13th of December. And another thing, compiled by the Boston Globe's Bob Ryan and Ed Franklin. Benoit Bonmo, which I think is a witty remark I've since learnt, a Benoit Bonmo of the week. Benoit Benjamin says the fans can boo him at home all they want. Quote, I'm going to hold my head high. I don't care if the fans boo me. I'm two together this year for that. End quote. Checked the colour of your grass lately, Doug? After losing at home to the 76ers, Chicago coach Doug Collins lamented, quote, there's not much you can do when the bench only scored 16 points. End quote. For his information, the 1986-87 Celtics played 105 games and in 63 of them, the bench scored fewer than 16 points. Wow. Now, in the miscellany, the Clippers won their seventh game Thursday. They didn't win their seventh game last season until January 31. Hmm. Clipper rookie Martin Nestle was whistled for five fouls in just 10 minutes Wednesday. Just wondering if uh, Martin Nestle is any relation to Elvis Presley. <laughs> I don't know, mate. I'm all shook up <laughs> just hearing that. <laughs> uh, now, Nestle played 44 games with the LA Clippers and Sacramento in this one season of NBA action. The top five rebounders in the league are forwards. Houston's Akeem Olajuwon is the best at the center position, averaging 10.8 boards a game. Purvis Short, traded to the Rockets by the Warriors at the start of the season, burned his old team last Saturday, connecting on 13 of 15 shots. Houston ran away with a 121-96 to victory, and Short had 27 points in just 29 minutes. Purvis certainly didn't have any shortcomings when it comes to scoring the <laughs> ball, Adam. No, he did not. December 15th, Chicago at Detroit in front of 23,729. Saw the Pistons hang on for a 127-123 to victory in overtime. Chicago dropped to 14-7. and For Chicago, Jordan had a great game again. 38 points, 8 rebounds, 12 assists and 3 steals. Paxson had 22 points. Oakley had 19 points and 17 boards. Horace Grant, 15 points and 7 rebounds. And Brad Sellers had 15 points. For Detroit, 
Lamb refused to be silenced with 29 points and 8 rebounds. Dantley had 27 points, 8 rebounds and 7 assists. So great game there from Adrian Dantley. And Isaiah Thomas, 25 points. Rick Mahorn added 16 points and 14 boards. On this day of the game, the Detroit Free Press's Pistons Corner detailed a fight between Isaiah Thomas and his former teammate, Six foot nine, Sydney Green, also a former member of the Chicago Bulls. A fine appeared to be likely. Quote, after it was over, I thought, that's not one of the smartest things you've ever done, Isaiah. End quote. So Isaiah referring to himself there in the third person. You could argue that this is a forgotten gem in the Jordan slash Bulls law. Uh, as per Bob Sacramento's recap in the Chicago Tribune, quote, for once, the game lived up to its advanced billing. End quote. Now, the Bulls trailed in this game by as many as 15 points in the third quarter. After missing a jumper with six seconds left in the game, Rick Mahorn grabbed the rebound and was fouled by MJ with just two seconds left, and the Pistons ahead 114 to 112. Rick made one of two from the charity stripe. Down by three, Chicago called timeout, knowing that they had to score a three to force overtime. You see the time remaining. Did he get it in in time? Yes, Jordan for three. We go to overtime. Is that something? Michael Jordan nailed a tough, off-balance 24-footer as time expired. Said MJ, quote, I won't say it was luck because I was trying to make it. I didn't have any balance, but I tried to square up as much as possible. Rodman said he was going to foul me. I wish he would have. We would have won the game, end quote. Well. Wow. Jordan would fail out of the game, something that rarely happened after a great defensive play from Joe Dumas, who drew the offensive foul with 16 seconds left in overtime. The Bulls were trailing 124 to 123 at the time. Joe made one of two free throws, and a Pippen three-point attempt was off the mark. The Bulls fouled Liam Beer. He made both free throws that made the final score 127 to 123, even with the loss. Chicago still had the best road record in the NBA at 8-4. And, and said Dennis Keith Rodman post-game, quote, We're similar teams, both young and talented with guys coming off the bench who can play. We are two equal teams in the East, end quote. Now that was the Pistons' seventh straight win in a streak that would reach 10. On December 17, Cleveland at Chicago in front of 17,560 at the stadium, the Chicago Bulls defeated Cleveland 111 to 100, which extended the Bulls' record to 15 and 7. For Chicago, Jordan had 52 points, six assists, and four steals. Dave Corzine, 16 points, nine rebounds, and three assists. Charles Oakley, 12 points and eight rebounds. Scotty Pippen, 10 points, and John Macbeth Paxson had 13 assists. Great game from Pax. Not to be overlooked was MJ's 52. <laughs> For the Cavaliers, Brad Doherty, 22 points, six rebounds, and six assists. Craig Elo, friend of the show, 15 points. <laughs> Ty Corbin, 15 points. And a Cleveland Cavalier that you may not have heard of before, Kevin Johnson, 14 points, six rebounds, and eight assists. That's right, that KJ. The other thing is, I don't actually have it in our notes, but Mark West and uh, who was the other one? Dale Curry are actually on the Cavaliers roster at this stage. So in terms of names on a roster that you wouldn't expect for a cursory NBA fan of the 80s, you'd be quite surprised at some of those names uh, all on the one team. How trippy would that be seeing KJ in the Cleveland uniform? I've very rarely seen footage of KJ playing for the Cavs. I don't think I've seen any footage at all. I don't think I've seen a photo of him. Let's quickly do a uh, check on Kevin Johnson. It was his rookie season, 87-88. He played... 52 games with Cleveland and then the final 28 with Phoenix, where, of course, he was most known and played out his entire NBA career. Can't recall a single KJ highlight. I'm probably blanking on something important, but great point there, mate. KJ is one of the uh, great, underrated, never spoken about guys in NBA history. He was one of my favorite players. Lightning quick. I reckon I'm looking at the first of a photo of KJ in a Cavs uniform that I've ever seen. Number 11. He wore number 11 with Cleveland. He initially wore number 11 with Phoenix through the end of the 88 season before he reverted to his famous number 7 for the rest of his career. That's awesome. Basketball reference coming through with the goods again. Three-time All-Star, won the most improved player in 89. First season with the Suns. Five-time All-NBA. Yeah. 
a small snapshot of just how good he was. Yeah, also sat out the 99 season, the lockout season, did not play, retired, mm. came back for six games with the Suns in 2000. I actually forgot that even happened. Ditto, yeah, same. Great player. Oh, absolute gun. Some of his dunks for, how big was he? 6'2"? 6'1". 6'1". Some of his dunks on guys like Mark Eaton and... Elijah Wan. Hot Rod Williams, that one on Elijah Wan is an all-timer. Obviously, he had the hops to be able to dunk on a guy like Akeem, but it was just so quick and his ability to, to penetrate and get to the hole was amazing. Also drafted by the Major League Baseball's someone or others. Can't remember who he played for. But yeah. He was signed up to play Major League 2. Yeah. Not actually the movie Major League 2, but... No. <laughs> Let's get back to Cavaliers Bulls. After playing 50 minutes in the loss to the Pistons, Doug Collins gave Jordan the day off practice ahead of this game. He also let Paxson and Oakley miss practice too. MJ said, quote, I turned my answering machine on, turned my mellow music on, turned the lights out, locked the doors and went to sleep. I was really exhausted. The rest was very helpful to me, end quote. Yeah, that's something that you'd never heard from MJ, was it? No. I was really exhausted. In what was only Chicago's second win in six games, MJ's 52 was a season high to that point. Michael had 15 points in the fourth quarter as the Bulls outscored Cleveland 38 to 29. Jordan went 20 of 31 from the field and made all 12 of his free throws. 20 of 31? Yep. Bloody hell. In quick succession, MJ, Pippen and Paxson each scored baskets that took the lead to 103-92 with 1 minute 37 seconds left. Post-game, coach Doug Collins said, quote, Michael Jordan is a champion and is so damned explosive, I just can't afford to rest him, end quote. Players of the week. For December the 6th, Clyde Drexler of Portland averaged 31.3 points, 7.3 rebounds, 7.8 assists and 2.8 steals per game as the Blazers went four and zip. That was the back-to-back Player of the Week awards for the Glide. He also won it back on the 29th of November. On December 13, Magic Johnson of the Lakers in his first mention, I think, of the episode, mm. 20.3 points, 8.3 rebounds, and 15 assists per game as the Lakers went 2-1. and one. And the high man across the association in points, Jordan had that 52-point game against Cleveland on the 17th of December. Barkley had 24 rebounds versus Portland on the 9th of December, and he had 38 points in that same game. And Isaiah Thomas had 18 assists for Detroit against Portland on the 8th of December. Now, the NBA standings through December the 18th, our division leaders were in the Atlantic, Boston were 13 and 8. In the Central, Detroit were 15 and 5. In the Midwest, Dallas were 13 and 7. And in the Pacific, the Lakers were 15 and 6. The New Jersey Nets were the league salad dwellers at 3 and 17. The Bulls went 3 and 3 in this span of games we're talking about. And for context, even though Detroit led the Central on win percentage at 15 and 5, Atlanta were 15 and 6, and Chicago were 15 and 7 in terms of their wins as well. Mm. Thanks again, as always, for being a part of the show. Is there anything you'd like to add before we do put a bow on the episode? It really was an episode of tidbits, including us finding out that Horace and Harvey actually had a third twin, Harry. <laughs> Giddy up. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed the show and share my web address with your friends and colleagues in allairness.com. Check out the podcast archive for plenty more episodes with high-profile guests. Follow me on Twitter at InAllAnnis. Please add your like to the show's social hub, facebook.com slash InAllAnnis. Join me next time for another edition of the show. Harry Grant. I love it. Triplets. Yeah, triplets. And I love how we now refer to Dave and Artis as the one player for the Bulls on a statistical level. <laughs> yeah, I don't actually have Artis's stat line there, but obviously he was a good contributor as well. I guess if Corzine had 16, then uh, Artis had 10, I suppose. Um, great stuff. On, oh, no, hang on. 24. No, he had eight. <laughs> Learned to count. Um, okay. Purvis. Definitely Nad. Uh, Nad. Purvis. 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 <laughs> Purvis, <laughs> Purvis certainly didn't have any shortcomings when it comes to scoring the ball, Adam. <laughs> no, he did not. He did not. Uh, imagine if we did this show live. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Wouldn't work too well.